Enjoy me mateys! Ten minutes? Why, we better get... Welcome to another episode of Short Movie Time, or SMT for short, where we go over short movies, as the name suggests. I got Pirate Cove pre-show today, I got afternoon class, and I also have best friend. Woo! What a strong combo. Hi folks, I'm R, and welcome to the video. Send me your video suggestions on Twitter, or at me with my username, Gamersue, so I can see them mentioning what other gems I'm missing out on, which I should go over in the next SMT video. Without much further delay, let's get right into the first movie. For the first movie, we have the Analog Horror Pirate Cove pre-show by none other than Baddington. His video was flagged by YouTube and is now unfortunately deleted, which was due to the last scene, I believe, but I'm not too sure. Um, the last scene includes a topic that is quite sensitive and YouTube completely hates any mention of it, even though it's fiction happening to a cartoony robotic mascot. I personally had experience with YouTube age restricting and partially demonetizing some of my previous videos, two Doki Doki videos to be precise, a recent video about Happy Humble's Burger Farm, and the case of Rachel Foster. And I can tell you folks, it's not a good feeling, especially if YouTube is your main source of income. It even hurts more as you spend so much time creating such videos and putting so much love and passion into each single one of them. It's basically your baby or your pet or whatever there is that you really care about. My condolences, Baddington. No one can truly understand better than a fellow content creator how much it truly hurts. And especially that Baddington videos are so damn well done and most of all are original. He probably spends weeks, if not months, on each original video. Anyway, we're getting a little sidetracked. The Pirate Cove pre-show displays another closer look on the mishaps in the Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. Foxy the Pirate Fox prepares the audience for a show that is about to begin in 10 minutes, with Chica, Freddy, and Bunny gathering their gears and warming up. Ahoy me mateys! It be your favorite swashbuckling buccaneer! Foxy, the Pirate Fox! <laughs> when I tell ya, we got a grand show for you today in just about 10 minutes! Wait, 10 minutes? That's right, 10 minutes! Can you bloody believe it? 10 minutes? Why, we better gather our gear before time runs out! Oh, and I've gotta prep my singing voice. La 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 la! Bonnie, make yourself useful and mop the stage, will you? Whatever you say, Mr. Boss Man. Just try not to slip, Cottontail. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hey! Will you landlubbers stop mucking around? Anyway, you skellywags, just be here in time for the show. Not a moment before, and not a moment later, you hear? Or else you'll be forced to walk the blank! <laughs> it all seems like another typical show in the pizzeria, up until we learn the audience are no other than the five children that go missing, with several headlines in the newspapers mentioning their disappearance. The little intro by the four animatronics keeps on repeating, with a child going missing after each intro. The first victim, being the seated child on the outer left hand side, disappears, with Bonnie having blood seeping out of his eyes, depicting how the corpse of the child was stuffed inside the animatronic. As we learn from the games, the murderer, William Afton, stuffed his victims in the animatronics, with their corpses slowly decomposing, producing an unbearable pungent odor, with bodily fluid oozing out, as heard from the accounts of several customers in the pizzeria. Yeah! 
Bonnie, make yourself useful and mop the stage, will you? Just try not to slip, Cottontail. How unbelievably stupid and deluded was Afton, thinking that he could hide the corpses of his victims in the animatronics, who are the mascots of the damn pizzeria and always in contact with the customers? Didn't he think that he would eventually get found out by, you know, just hiding them in bright daylight? The intro slowly become more corrupted and distorted with more children missing from the show and more of the animatronics displaying the same characteristics of Bunny with blood oozing out of them. Finally, the last victim is the girl who gets stuffed inside the Chica animatronic with a warning text appearing instructing the viewer to discard of the tape to of course get rid of any evidence of the children being murdered in the pizzeria as it would be bad for the press. Your favorite swashbuckling buccaneer, Foxy the Pirate Fox. <laughs> when I tell you, we got a grand show for you today in just about 10 minutes. Wait, 10 minutes? That's right, 10 minutes. Can you bloody believe it? Viewing of this tape is prohibited. Discard it immediately. Viewing of this tape is prohibited. Discard it immediately. Viewing of this tape is prohibited. Discard it immediately. Viewing of this. As soon as the text disappears, Foxy is also observed to have suffered the same fate of the other animatronics, with bodily fluid oozing out of its orifices. Suddenly, Spring Bunny animatronic, seemingly worn by William Afton, appears behind the orderly placed chairs of the audience, which are now empty, mentioning in a sinister tone that Foxy wanted an audience. With the hollowed out spirits of the children appearing, which I personally believe are the depiction of the remnants of the children, who are trapped in the pizzeria now, within the bodies of the animatronics they were stuffed inside of. Of course, if you have watched my previous FNAF videos, you know that William Afton alongside a colleague of his called Henry conducted at best an unethical experiment using a machine dubbed as Scooper, removing the endoskeletons of the animatronics and injecting them with remnants, which we later learned to be derived from the souls of the victims, infusing in with the animatronics to make them more lifelike and more sentient, for whatever reason really. However, William kills children and Henry discovers his daughter, Charlotte Emily, fell victim to William as well, unveiling that the souls of the children actually became trapped in the animatronics, becoming hostile, murderous monsters not in control of their own bodies. Confused and angry, when Henry in a final desperate act tries to redeem himself, burning the pizzeria alongside all of the animatronics having remnants, with himself, Michael Afton and William Afton being in a spring trap animatronic burning. However, it's all in vain when we discover in FNAF security breach that all of the souls survived, with all of them blending in together to create the blob, being so resentful that they don't want Springtrap, uh, being the representation of William Afton, ever escaping, suffering an eternity with them. And of course the horrible ending, which I won't show for obvious reasons, presents the Fredbear animatronic containing the soul of the last and the fifth victim child, who seems to end his life in a desperate attempt, 
as they are unwillingly trapped in the metallic bodies, enslaved for eternity to suffer a grim fate, being confused and angry, becoming monsters as a result, and killing other children. So, of course, the victim didn't want to suffer that fate and wanted to end it all. That is why Henry tried to put an end to it all, burning them all, including himself, to atone for his sins. <sighs> oh my... Let's move on to the next movie. For the second short movie, we have Afternoon Class by Osro, which is the name of the YouTube channel. I'm not going to butcher the name of the creator, which I will show by the end of the movie. It starts by a seemingly teenage boy trying his hardest to stay awake in an afternoon class. It beautifully portrays how it feels trying to stay awake when you're tired. It's as if you're battling against a severely heavy head which desperately needs to rest on a place. The indifferent teacher observing his entire class is snoozing, pays no mind and carries on writing on the board. Knowing full well, at the end of the day, he just needs to get paid and majority of what he's teaching won't be useful in the children's future life. <sighs> During fighting a losing battle, the kid goes through a psychedelic trip into an astral dimension trying to still fight the urge to sleep. However, he fails and doesn't manage to stay awake at all. Being the only woke student in the classroom, he tries to respect the teacher as it seems he looks up to him. But when the teacher notices the last kid in his classroom fell asleep, he takes a deep breath in relief and reveals that in fact he was fighting the urge to fall asleep as well. He takes a seat and realizing he's safe to shut his eyes as literally all of the students, I mean all of the students have fallen asleep. He starts drifting away as well and sleeping.
I've been there and you probably have been there too and I completely understand it. I've been in the classrooms before fighting the urge to fall asleep, which usually didn't end well with many teachers getting offended. Some had bitter attitudes just laughing it off and some were extremely triggered. I also have been a teacher myself being in classrooms and also online, noticing students falling asleep and drifting off while I was fighting the urge to fall asleep myself. I mean, I think it's completely normal. We're all humans at the end of it and being cooped up in a room, repeating the same things over and over again or listening to them as a student just gets really boring, which ultimately leads to one just failing to stay awake. And I don't think by any means it's personal or intentional. They don't try to disrespect the teachers. Don't get me wrong, there are some who are extremely blatant, but usually that's not the case. Anyway, let's move on to the next movie. For the last film, we have Best Friend by David Galeo, Varonair, Juliana De Luca, Nicolas Olivieri, and Yi Shen. Sorry if I butchered any of these names. Uh, this movie is available to watch on the channel uh, Goblins? Goblins? It's a very black mirror-esque kind of movie which portrays life and how lonely it truly can be, leading to a lot of bad decisions. It starts with Arthur, the main character, celebrating his 30th birthday alongside close friends, seemingly a girlfriend-like character and fictional sci-fi characters. I'm gonna be turning 30 in a couple of years myself, so I wonder how I'll be spending it. Hopefully better than Arthur. I mean, it's gonna be a big jump. I guess the feelings of midlife crisis start heading then. Happy birthday to you! <laughs> what are you looking at? Come on, make a wish. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Okay, okay. Make a wish, make a wish, make a wish! <laughs> Thank you guys. That's amazing. Thank you, Kemi. <laughs> You're so silly. We're your friends, and that's what friends are for, right? You can all. It's quickly shown that all of these characters are virtual with Arthur having an augmented reality chip implant to combat his loneliness. He accidentally breaks his top-up drips and quickly rushes to the center to buy more in order not to lose Cammy and his virtual friends, something he's severely addicted to and seems like dependent on and doesn't see himself able to live without them. Hey Arthur, is everything okay? Fuck! Are you still looking for a better friend? Now, we can give you the best. The friend only you can see. Best friend. Never be alone. Another machine, Cammy. Sure, follow me. Cammy! Hey, Arthur. 
there? Gabby! Oh, thank God you're back. I, I really thought I was gonna lose you. What? Come on. I'm not going where? We are your friends. And that's where friends are for, right? Friends. Please. This moment of respite is short-lived as an addict from the dark empty alleyways attacks Arthur and steals his implant to get a quick fix of best friends. After failing to overpower the addict and losing sight of him, he gets faced with a reality with everyone having an implant, showing how common it is to own, being part of people's lives. This in a way relates to our life how we are bound to our phones and technology to communicate, socialize, and be a normal functioning part of society. As even the knowledge of someone not owning a phone in today's life seems very strange. As if they are an outcast and not part of the civilization that we so cherish. In a short transition, it seems as if Arthur overcame his addiction, experiencing the grim reality of life where everyone is addicted to best friend implant and without it, they would end up in the streets, with the homeless man seemingly selling all his belongings just to pay for the top-ups. However, it's quickly shown, despite his recent experience, Arthur decided to get another implant on the other side of his temple just to have hope and a will to live in this lonely world. Hey, Arthur. Folks, life is difficult, it's no joke, and reality at times can be horrible. The difficulty of earning money, supporting oneself, and trying to be happy at the same time seems to be almost impossible and just a fiction. That's why many people might lean towards other ways of escaping these facts, which sometimes is positive, such as traveling, making new good friends, doing healthy activities such as exercising or learning a new skill. But at times, the easier escape seems to be using recreational drugs, which never ends too well, as they tend to develop dependency, and being dependent on anything always leads to disappointment. This is personally one of the most horrifying things I could ever imagine, living a fictional life just to be happy, when in reality, one could be miserable and far from it. This is often depicted in drowning oneself in technology, alcohol, or other means of escape just not to live in reality and overcoming one's fears and personal issues. That's why I got this tattoo to live reality, no matter how unforgiving it would get, as the only way to combat certain issues is to face them and confront them, rather than escaping. With that said, there are still a lot of challenges that I need to face, and if you are as well, just know that you're not alone. Everyone, in a way, has their own issues and problems. Oh boy. Again, this got very deep. If you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for more SMT videos coming up by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. I like making these videos for the series myself very much, so it would be a no-brainer to make much more of them. It's been your host, Dar, and love you all very much. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you on the next one.